Hello, we're going to add a custom control flow to your CS1 remix. And how do you remix CS1? Well, you can do it easily using the bit.ly remix CS1. As you can see, I have right here, bit.ly bit.ly forward slash remix hyphen CS1. By placing that into the browser, it automatically generates a remix for us of the CS1 project. Now let's take a look before we go through and review some of our previous workflows as we do this particular custom control flow. The custom control flow is really going to be ultimately housed in this public game.js file. So let's go into the public game.js file and take a look at where we are going to ultimately be putting our code. So here is the section of code that will house our custom control flow. And what we will be doing here is basically replacing this section here with some of our own custom code as well as the section down here. So pretty much from line 81 to line 89 we will be making some edits and we will also be editing the name of this variable up here called currently it's called doggy quiet because I was close and we're gonna make that more appropriately named for what we are going to uh, add into the game. Okay, so currently what this does is this will, if the player is within two game units of the bullpug dog, it's going to stop the bullpug dog from making a barking sound. And then it's going to set this doggy quiet because I was close to true. It, otherwise, else if the doggy is not barking, and the doggy is quiet because I was close, then we're going to have the dog begin barking again and then set that doggy quiet because I was close variable to false. And that is how it currently works. Let's go and add our own new item, our own custom item with sound, a custom movable object with sound. So to do that, let's go to Magic of Voxel. And here we just have a blank Magic of Voxel project. And what I will do is go Command A to select everything. Press the Delete key. Now everything is gone. I'm just going to make a small object. I'll make it 15 by 15 by 15 voxel space. And I'll zoom in a little bit here by using two fingers on the trackpad. I will create a new palette by clicking 3 under palette and let me choose a color. I will, let me even think what, what do I want to make here first. Uh, let's just make, hmm, let us make some shape over here. Let me think of something to be good. Uh, let me make like a little speaker. All right, that would be good make like a little speaker like a audio speaker so if I go over here with my brush in attach mode uh, maybe I would just go ahead and make this the base of the speaker then I can go face attach and I can pull up and that could be the height of the speaker and then I will just paint uh, one side of the speaker over here and this will be easy enough and I'll make a different color or actually let's go over here and do command Command and click and drag, copy that color, and we'll make it just a lighter tint of it. A lighter tint of that color. And that will be kind of the inside section of, whoops. I want to switch it to block paint and make that like the inside section of the speaker. And then maybe I could just put some little uh, dots and maybe I'll go and use a darker color for that. And let me just use that same base color. I'll go con command, click and drag, and then I'll make it a darker version of that same color. And I will just go every other 
block, and this will be my representation of a speaker. Well, let me actually take that back. So this is just going to be an audio speaker, so it could literally be saying anything, I guess, in the game. So that will give us some flexibility when it comes to putting a sound to this. Okay, quick enough. All right, so, and let's go take a look. There we go. There's our speaker for right now, and let's go export it. Click export. Well, let's do it properly. Let's save it. Let's save it as speaker. Might as well. Let's go file, save as, and I'll just call it speaker. And then I'll go down here to the palette and save the palette as well as speaker. Now it's, that's the proper way to do it. So we're saving everything first and then export the OBJ file, speaker.obj. We'll save that, export. And now we can go ahead and uh, quit Magic of Voxel, Command Q, and we'll open up Blender. And what we're going to do in Blender is just merely uh, do a quick conversion, file conversion, basically. So let's go into Blender, and we will go and delete the current cube first. Actually, X, Enter. Delete the current cube, and then we will go File, Import, Wavefront, OBJ, and we'll go to where I have Magic of Voxel. You'll have Magic of Voxel in your Applications folder, typically. I'll go into my Export, and then that's going to be Radio, or I'm sorry, Speaker. Speaker. And here it is. And it doesn't look like anything right now. Um, I can hit Enter and then press the A key to deselect. Press the Option key and drag around. You can see it's not rendering anything. I could set it up to render in here, but I don't want to. I'm just going to use it for exporting it into the proper format. So we're going to export it as .glb right here, .glb. I'll export it to my documents and game models, and I'll call it speaker. And there we have it. We export it as a glb file, and now we can exit Blender. All right. Now we've exited Blender. We can now get that file into the game, that model file into the game by going to the Assets, Add Asset, go to the computer, and we'll go into the Documents, and we'll go to Game Models, and we'll go to Speaker GLB, and then it brings it in. There we have it. And here is our model file, our speaker. So what we will do is we'll have to get a sound file to go along with that that's going to be associated with that speaker. So what I suggest is that we use freesound.org. Make an account at freesound.org. I already have an account and I will log in. And at freesound.org I'm going to search for uh, what would be a, a nice little, um, I will say I will just say loop, because that, that can just be any generic sound. Since it's a speaker, let me hear this analog vintage loop. Okay, that's a beat loop there on the C's loop. Let's hear this. Oh, that's too long. That's going to be too long. We don't want anything that's going to be too long that will take up no, more memory than we want to. We don't want to have these really long files. This eight-second slow drum... Okay, maybe not, maybe not either. Let's go with a synth sound. Let me see what shows up when I do that. Let me just see something that's a short synth sound. That's fine, that, that works. So I'll go over to this one, and it's actually an MP3 already. I don't even have to convert it. Um, but, you know, we could do that if we w had wanted to, uh, download it in a WAV file and then converted it. So there's my MP3 file. And what I'll do is I'll just rename that synth. See how, um, let me show that in the finder. Just rename that synth. And it's 197 kilobytes, maybe a little bit longer, a little bit more than I want. So I will... I'll live with that though, and I'll just drag it and drop that MP3 file into the 
folder here, synth.mp3. Now I'm ready to go. I got the speaker and I got this sound associated with it. So that's what you need. You need your custom object and you need a sound that goes with it so that you can do this custom control flow. So what we're going to do next is go set up our client config file. So go public conf client config.js and we're going to go into the objects section of that and that's under physics objects. And what we'll do under the physics objects is maybe we can copy one of the current objects and use it as a uh, template. Okay, so what we'll copy here is the bull pug, that dog uh, that I already have in there. We'll copy that from lines 117 to 120. Just copy that, command C, go to the end of that line, 120, hit enter, and then we'll paste in what we just copied. So we just made a copy of that bull pug object. What we're going to do is we'll just change this the speaker with capital S uh, and we'll change the position um, rather than 22 for the X value we'll change it to maybe 15 for the X value for the Z value we'll maybe change it to 20 and we'll leave the Y value at 0 for the position keep the rotation the same keep everything else the same for right now maybe the scale might get changed later but now what we want to do is go and get the link which is the URL for the model, and then we want to get the URL for the sound. So one at a time, let's go back to the assets, and let's get the URL, first of all, for the speaker. Copy the URL for the speaker, and go back to the client config, JS, and let us go ahead and replace the model right there, and let's go get the URL for the sound now. So let's go into the assets again, go to the synth mp3, that was the sound, copy that one. Go back into the client config, go into the physics objects again, go down here under speaker sound, and we'll just replace the URL for the sound. And now we should be good to go into the game, except we didn't add a admin key. So I'm going to add an admin key right here, just for sake of this. Get this going here so now it's going to be up and running and everything should show up in the game except it's not going to work with the conditional logic or the control flow yet it isn't going to work with what we made we'll change it in a moment we'll show you how it currently works and then we'll change it so we'll go into the game and close this up here load up the game so if the game ever hangs and takes a while to load, a good thing to do is you can press Option Command J, Option Command J, and click on the Network tab, and then go over to the button or the radio button and click Disable Cache, uh, and then just refresh that page again. It's a good way to get it to make sure that you're loading everything new into the page. So there's our refresh and hopefully we get it booted up here. All right. Okay, maybe not. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead back over here. It says show live like it's gonna work. Okay, let's see if it gets going now. And we should have that running in a moment. Okay. Since we're having a little trouble with that, let's go ahead and set up the game.js file. The game.js file, what we'll do is we'll put our custom section in it. So rather than doggy quiet because I was close, let's work with uh, our speaker. So let's change this to speaker, speaker quiet because I was close. And let's go ahead and change all the places where it says doggy quiet because I was close. Change that to speaker quiet because I was close. Now, of course, we could name this variable anything we want, but we want to name it something that makes sense. We are using this to represent whether the speaker is currently quiet because I had been close to it. So there we have taken care of that. Next, we want to go to line 82 and replace the, um, let's change the distance away to 4. 
So if the player is within four of the speaker, we'll change the bullpug to speaker on that line. And then on line 83, we'll change bullpug again to speaker, capital S. And down on 86, we'll change bullpug to speaker. And on 87, we'll change bullpug to speaker. And we will see if we get the desired result uh, when we go into the game. Still having some trouble with this uh, game loading up, and I'm not quite sure. Let me go check over here on the server side. Let me, let me go see what's up with that. User ID, okay. So it's just it spun up the new connection. So the song, there we go. There we go. It's working now. There we go. All right, let's turn the sound down here. Whoops. Let's go log in. And. Well, I can hear that. Sound Welcome for sure. to CS1. Okay. So what I'll do is let me move this clock out of the way. And here's that loud. Move the dog away. Now look what happens when I get close to the speaker. Notice we're hearing that a speaker make those synth sounds. Here it goes again. Now watch this. Okay, now it's not making the sound. Because I am within four units of the speaker, the speaker is no longer making the sound. But if I go away from the speaker, if I go more than four units away, watch what happens. Now it makes the sound again. But when I go close to the speaker, it stops making the sound. That's basically the control flow that we have customized. We made it so when we went close to the speaker, it stopped making it sound. When we went away from it, it would, re, uh, it would continue making it sound. Have a great day.